and welcome to my channel. My name is Kate and welcome to day four of the 30 days of Stephen Graham Jones. This is a series that was organized by Amanda over at the Reading and Writing Life. I imagine you are coming over here from her channel, but if not, definitely check her out. I will have her link down below. Uh, I really admire that she put all of this together and organized a bunch of us to talk about works by Stephen Graham Jones. I fell in love with his book, The Only Good Indians, last year, so I was very excited to be able to participate in this. Today I'm going to be talking about The Ones That Got Away, which is a short story collection by Jones, and the rough theme for this is primal fears that everybody has, and kind of how they affect childhood, and many of the characters in these short stories are robbed of a normal childhood in some way. So usually something awful happens, as you would expect for horror, and there are 13 stories in here. I have picked three of them to talk about as my top three of the collection. Overall, I would definitely recommend this one. Short story collections can be pretty hit or miss. I think that with this collection, there wasn't a story I rated less than three stars, even the stories that were massively confusing. I think what I like so much about Jones is even when a story is a little too gross for me, or um, I don't understand what's happening, uh, like the meat tree, the atmosphere is still so good that I don't really care, and I still get, I still can admire the way that he writes. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the first story in the collection. I would highly recommend not reading this first because it's so well done in so few pages that I think you won't appreciate the other stories as much. Not that they're not good, just that it, it starts off on such a high note. Um, and the story basically follows a father and son who get lost in the woods during a blizzard and have to survive and their interactions with this rabbit creature that the boy keeps seeing. And God, it, it packs a punch for being seven pages. I think the themes and the atmosphere for this short story are remarkable. And um, it has a lot of what I like about Jones where you get sort of these, is this really happening? Is this in their heads? How, what is, what is going on? But you also get kind of this very creepy dread feeling out of it. I, it's difficult to name a f absolute favorite in this because the three that I'm going to talk about were so good and I loved them all, gave them all five stars. But uh, I think on just a tightness of the storytelling level, I would have to give it to this one. The second one I will talk about is Raphael, which is uh, sort of, it has very strong vibes of It from Stephen King, if you're familiar with that one, except that it's substantially shorter since it's somewhere in 10 to 20 page range and It is like a thousand pages. Um, I do think that uh, at least in endings, Jones uh, does a bit better than Stephen King. And this is a little bit darker. It still has some of the nostalgia and the group of misfits vibe that I loved about it. Um, but this group of misfits essentially starts telling each other scarier and scarier stories until things explode. And it also has some of the vibes of The Only Good Indians, where you kind of have this looking back at childhood feel to it and the dread of um, hearing this story again. So definitely recommend this one. The final one I will talk about is Lonigan's Luck. Uh, this one is sort of a western style horror where you have a snake oil salesman who travels from town to town and uh, things quickly uh, become more supernatural and awful things start happening in this town. So uh, this is really, really strong on the sort of gallows humor that I tend to really love on a pure enjoyment level. This is my favorite in the collection just because I ended up laughing and then feeling bad for laughing at some of the things that happen in here and kind of the tone of the narration. Um, but I wanted more. There's So at the end of all of the collection, 
there's actually a note section that where Stephen Graham Jones talks about each story and kind of what inspired that story. And one of the things that he mentions for Lonigan's Luck is that he wanted to do kind of a series that's related for this short story. And I would love to see that. I would pick that up in a heartbeat. So I said, this collection is really good at being kind of a wide arrangement of horror. There's some that are truly bizarre, like the meat tree that I mentioned, um, which just, I don't think you could predict where it was going from where it started. And um, then you have stories that are kind of gross, stories that are kind of classic goosebump style horror uh, short stories. So you really do get a good mix. And I think it's a great taste of what Stephen Graham Jones is capable of in terms of his writing style. So if you're going to pick up a kind of a quick taste of his writing, I would definitely pick this up. That will do it for me today. Hopefully this was helpful, helpful to you. Um, let me know if you pick up this collection. I would definitely be curious to see what other people think of the stories in it. And uh, if you are waiting day by day for our reviews, next on the list is going to be Heather from the Soggy Expat Book Nerd, who will be talking about Zombie Bake Off. You can check that out on day four. If you are doing the playlist that Amanda put together, um, then go ahead and skip on to the next one. Great to see you guys, and I will be back later in the month to talk about a couple more stories. Goodbye!